I'm ready for the select few who came here on time. Much appreciated. Can you believe it? It's a month since the beginning of this message. We're one third of the way through. Right? Wow, it's almost like time passes or something, Professor. <laughs> Boomers considerations aside, this week we are going to continue with our discussion of Jules Verne and the novel The Master of the World. But since I had a lengthy and boring introduction last week, I'm not going to insist much more. And instead, today, we will together engage in a classroom activity in preparation for the next assignment, the next written assignment, which is due in October, so I believe it's next week. We'll review the date together. Yes. Yeah, it, so it says on one page on Notion, it says October 13th, and on the other page it says October 6th. Okay. I'm assuming it's I'll, the earlier one. But... I'll, I'll fix it. Uh, I'll, I'll review that and fix it. Did you see just that just now? I, I saw that like two days ago when I was checking. It's on like on the week five. Maybe it was before because I did make some changes okay. to the dates, but there might be a contradiction to be addressed and resolved. So thanks for pointing that out. And uh, as I said, on uh, Thursday, we have a new movie, which is Christine. I'll review with you the page for week five and the assignment uh, assignments that uh, you find there. Um, I also want to engage in a short discussion about Bumblebee that we saw but we didn't have any time at the end of the selection of scenes we watched on Thursday for any comments. So we can do some of that today and now. I don't think I'm forgetting anything, although I have this feeling that I might be forgetting something. Uh, so let's start with the from from where we left. Right? We watched Christine, and by now you can easily recognize some of the narrative patterns that we've seen to an extent in the love bag with Herbie and Jim Douglas, etc. We saw more prominently inside Bumblebee and we'll see very clearly in uh, Christine on Thursday of this week and of course to be continued next week with additional scenes. That is to say the fact that you have the, the, the car used as a narrative device in some ways. The car, I'm using the term car loosely because in one case Herbie is an actual car, magic, sentient vehicle, and in the Transformer series Bumblebee is a more elaborate being, a biological slash technological creature that takes the shape of any vehicle they want to, but mm, the transformations are not limited to one vehicle, so they're not strictly just a car. So basically what you see there that is that you have a combination in the narrative of the story in the film between the idea of the main character or some of the main characters working on themselves, so the work on the self in terms of growth, and in Bumblebee you have a teenager trying to develop into an adult that would be recognized as such within the inner circle of her family and the extended circle of her peers at the school, other adults as well. In Herbie, you have a failing uh, 
race car driver, race car driver who seems to be at the end of his career, not able to develop his potential, working not just on his racing skills, because ultimately Jim will be able to engage in a mature relationship with Carol and be worthy of a long-term relationship and marriage because he develops fully as a man. Very much like what you would find, for example, in chivalric literature from the Middle Ages on, where the hero who starts as a page and ends up with an, as a knight, so uh, begins as at the lowest uh, end of this uh, social scale and comes out as a warrior hero uh, who deserves the attention, the rewards, maybe even an aristocratic title from the leader. In all of those narratives, it is never just about the skills. For example, in Tsai Shivarik literature, our protagonist becomes a hero and a full man, a real hero and a real man, if you want to use the soundtrack of Drive, um, a, a film from 2011, not simply because they're a better warrior at the, at the end of the story, but also because they've matured spiritually. They've grown emotionally. They've developed a lot of uh, personality skills. So how do you represent this kind of work on the self? in a typical narrative in literature at the turn of the 20th century, you might find novels with a, a lot of stream of consciousness where the characters is uh, describing their thoughts and therefore you see the inner work on that. In a movie, you cannot represent that very well and it, it is much better instead to externalize this kind of process and make it, make it material in such a way that you can show something on the screen. So work on the self becomes work on the vehicle so that you have something you can easily represent, something you can visualize through the emotional display of the character. And you know that by the time the vehicle is ready, restored, ready to engage in uh, real life tests, the work on the self is also very advanced. And by the end, you have a fully realized personality inside the character, set of skills, but also a set of human qualities. And the vehicle itself has been perfected in some kind of way. So you see this very evident inside Bumblebee and you will see it again very prominently also developed in Christine with the proviso of course that in Christine you have the mirror, the opposite of that because you have a character who by the end is not a real man and a real hero but a real diabolical <laughs> instrument and a real evil guy. So the realization goes in the di different direction, not a positive direction, but a negative direction. But you have that arc, that narrative arc that is developed on the side of the personality of the character, on the human side, and on the side of the machine. Because even Christine will need to be restored. Even Christine uh, is found as a wreck outside the house of this grisly old man nicely played by the actor and uh, will be completely restored by Arnie, the protagonist of one of the protagonists in Christine. So any comments, any uh, reflections on Bumblebee, they don't have to be limited to this kind of pattern that I wanted to emphasize for your benefit, any kind of reactions. And if you will, I would also I can accept any kind of comments, but based on what we've seen in Bumblebee and before we see Christine, let's play this kind of game. If you had to externalize your personality right now, what vehicle, what ve vehicular shell would represent you right now? So you see Charlie at the beginning, 
uh, drives a Volkswagen Beetle, right? And by the end, she identifies with the new version of Bumblebee and her own Corvette, the one she was restoring with her father and finally managed to restore, complete the restoration by herself and a little bit with Bumblebee's help, at least encouragement, okay? So what outer shell would represent your personality? Make sure you understand what I'm talking about. It's not what vehicle you would like to drive now. Or, or in the future, or, or the kind of car you like, but a car that represents you right now at this point in your life, okay? And it doesn't have to be a specific model. If you don't know the model's names, you can just describe the kind of car that you are, that would represent you in this kind of narrative. If you were the protagonist instead of Charlie, and you were to be shown with a car that shows to the outside, to the viewers, who you are inside, what car would that be? And if you want, you can add, you can extend this even to the end, to the conclusion. What car should represent you three years from now, six months from now, at the end of your current journey? Again, it can be a model, a specific model. I would be this exact car or it could be a generic description it would be a car that looks like this or drives like this okay would anybody like to play this game engage in this game yes and and why? names because i'm still trying to i was curious it. if we had to give the reason why, is why if you want to right but the idea would be that whatever you put on this side is good enough that even visually I have an idea of how you are, right? Because for Charlie is an old Volkswagen Beetle that is barely functioning, not fully restored. It's not a restoration where the car is polished and waxed, right? And it becomes a pimped out Volkswagen Beetle anyone would be proud of. It is still a $500 junkyard vehicle brought back to a functioning state, but barely, with a lot of things uh, that uh, don't make it particularly cool, right? So the purpose of the game is show without telling, if you can, but if you want to add why to make everyone understand, that's fine. Madison? Probably the trolley, the old red cars of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You mean the actual uh, cars on rails that go up the hills? Yeah. So we're talking about a vehicle in general, not, not a specific car or a trolley car because the word car is used for, for, for that. Uh, yeah. So a trolley car of today or a or hundred years ago, just to be precise. Uh -huh. So exactly one that you would find now if you go to San Francisco that you can get on board now. Probably like a vintage looking trolley that's still functional. Mm -hmm. So from this, what I would get as a viewer is that you feel out of sync, out of place with today's technology, that you identify with something from the past, but it is still functioning, still in existence. So uh, uh, slightly uh, out of fit. With, with, the, with the context, right? So something a bit retro. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, okay, good, good. I, I, I like that. I, I think it was clear enough. It gives, gives a sense of a profile. Yes, uh, and names. I'm Johnny. Okay, Johnny, thank you. The team Ferrari Formula One. Uh -huh. <laughs> right now, you mean during this championship? Yeah. Uh, although, yeah, uh, there is a bit of exaggeration about their travels during the pit stops or the, some of the slow pit stops. But 
you go change those tires. <laughs> Have you any idea how heavy a Formula One tire is with the wheel inside? Okay, so yes, it gives me a, a, a sense of that even without your description. Of course, it projects a little bit of the conclusion on your choice, right? Because you have something that is already, that, that is not transitioning or, or transforming. You might say, yes, Ferrari are working towards a more glorious future where they will be winning more than one race per year and possibly go back in to, to contend for the championship. But otherwise, it's top of the scale, right? It's not exactly like Charlie still working on, on herself. You're proposing something that is a very advanced vehicle, right, John? But yeah, I appreciate that. Who else would like to try this? Yes, uh, Jackie? Or, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, probably like uh, like an early 2000s, I don't know, like Hyundai, like four door. It goes, it's not fancy, but it's steady. Mm -hmm. Reliable, yes. right? Uh, not not uh, flashy, right? Okay. Okay. Yes. It gives me a sense. I I I can see the match between uh, the way you want to present yourself and your choice. So it's a good way to visualize how you see yourself now. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Any other ideas? Yes, um, uh, and then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you said not specifically to like pick your own car, but I feel like I am doing stuff with my car a lot. So like, uh, it's just like a, it's a, it's a Corolla, but it's like. It's oh no, it's fine. If, if you, I said, if you're not familiar with every single model, then provide a specific des a, a generic description. But yeah, so your pick is a Corolla. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, uh, regular modified. Slightly modified, it's like it's got a couple of different things going for it, but then it also again has its check engine light that's been on for a couple of months. My registration's expired, <laughs> so um, it needs work. And in some ways, there are some details that betray that <laughs> yes, you're trying to catch up with life, mm -hmm. that, that there is work to be done on the car and the operation of the car that reflects that you don't have everything together, yeah, right? So that would be. A good way to visualize this connection between yourself as a character and the vehicle that is shown in this hypothetical movie about yourself. Okay, good, good. Anyone else? We have time for maybe another one? Any general uh, uh, commentary or reactions to Bumblebee? Or questions? Yes, John. Um, I was a big fan of the diegetic sound throughout the movie, like we had numerous times. <laughs> so where, telling the story with the lyrics of the songs, mm -hmm. right? And like having our characters like hear the music and then like in some cases <coughs> even interact with it. I was a big fan of that. Yeah, which is not unique to this kind of film. There are plenty of them. But particularly here, especially given the fact that Bumblebee can speak through the radio only at this point in the story. Yeah. Medicine? I really like Bumblebee from what I've seen of it. It still sticks to like those sort of AV tropes that are in, um, employed throughout uh, Michael Bay's films. Also, I feel happy like a um, more. I, I, I feel more like a Steven Spielberg's kind of vibe, even though yeah. he was the producer in other films where this kind of spirit, Spielbergian spirit, is not there. But there is a certain fairy tale quality to it, I find. Sorry yeah. for the interruption. Oh, no, no. I, I feel that way, too. Especially, I think, even in the visuals, it's much more um, quotes that sort of style. Because I feel like in the late 2000s, no, the early 2010s, there seemed to be the sort of trend that all the movies had to be sh like shot in this very bleak, lab sort of That's dwarfed true. out yeah. color palette. So it's just nothing but like sort of sickly great Rays and muddy browns and emphasis on um, crisis, yes. Like small, like blues, like uh, for instance, I think Twilight was sort of like the genre of that. There was the first film, and let's see, I think even Harry Potter got into it, the end of the franchise, even though it's 
its earlier films were more bright and colorful. So I feel like even the visual language sticks more close to that sort of narrative. I also feel like it's sort of being like what sort of story would happen if, say, maybe Fox's character was almost a focus, such an extent that I wonder if maybe if we're talking clone technology, perhaps uh, this character in Bumblebee is somehow related to maybe Fox's character, both because of their proficiency for um, mechanics and because of their desire to be um, become someone beyond what their peers knew them. I find it a bit of a stretch, personally. I see some of the elements, but frankly, I see Charlie in many more ways, like the female version of Shia LaBeouf's character, who's also kind of goofy, kind of awkward, but in a cutesy way. So, but uh, yeah, and as I probably wrote in my comments to your assignment, I find this film to be able to stand alone outside of the series, even yeah. someone who has no knowledge of the series can enjoy this as a film that doesn't require to know what will happen later on to the Autobots, etc. Yeah, for sure. The strength and narrative would probably be heard if we had to possibly put this, like if it was found out that it could stand its own weight. Or even then, would probably even be personally the weakness of her character. Charlie's character by connecting her to someone that's um, within that main franchise. So it also having to stand on their own two legs. Yeah. And it's a pity I haven't seen the actress in too many films. I know she tried a singing, tried singing, uh, a career, music career, but didn't go so well. But uh, I found she <coughs> did a wonderful job acting in yeah. Bumblebee. Oh yeah, Bumblebee is when we were talking about making Fox for Okay. Sorry? Uh, I thought you were talking about making Fox for a second. No, 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 I'm talking about uh, Charlie. I don't remember now the name of the actor. Let me show you briefly what you find inside week five and let's review also the assignment in there. So here you find additional excerpts from works by French science fiction writer Jules Verne, in particular, and this will be one of the readings, but I'm not going to expand on it in class, you will find just a few pages from Paris in the 20th century, which was the first novel submitted for publication by Jules Verne and rejected. And after that, he just put it in a drawer it was rediscovered later, even his son did not care to publish this again, even though it sounds very interesting, very modern when you read the story, and it was published again in the 1990s, after being, the manuscript was rediscovered. What, what makes it interesting is, and, and you find here a few notes, is that you find the city of Paris with vehicles of different kinds, trains, but also, but also uh, cars uh, with internal combustion engines and electric engines as well, okay? So you find some here. And it's understandable that this would happen since it was written just a few years after two different kind of engines one in particular was known by Jules Verne, were introduced engines, internal combustion engines were introduced before automobiles were experimented with. Uh, the, the best examples are Barsanti in Italy and Lenoir in France. Lenoir was Belgian, but very well known in France. Okay, and you have additional excerpts from the Master of the World focusing on this vehicle that is able to fly, go underwater, drive on a road, and of course, float and move on the water like a ship. I added notes and quotes that I'll use today. Feel free to use them yourself. There is selection, so if you do the readings, you don't exactly need the notes and quotes, but you might find them useful for the assignment because it's a selection of 
more interesting passages with a few comments. We'll do the in-class activity in just a little while. I added a few notes about the black motor car by uh, a British writer, Berland. It was published in 1905. It has a 1904 copyright, but I haven't found a copy from actually 1904. So it was probably just registered, but came out the next year. And this is an interesting story aligned with Jules Verne's uh, The Master of the World in the same kind of moralistic view of technology, because at the beginning of this novel you find a man who's a regular man with a family and uh, works in a bank, uh, not as a cashier, more like a manager. Uh, so is middle to upper middle class, uh, standing, upstanding citizen of a community, but he falls into um, uh, the, the, the hands of a quote-unquote temptress, a seductress, and uh, 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 you can call it evil if you want, female character who ensnares him and convinces him to take money from the bank so that they can leave the country, leave England, go somewhere in South America, start a new life and uh, take full advantage of their love and relationship. And of course, he's so taken by his passion for her that he does that and everything goes wrong. He's arrested, uh, the money is of course taken by the woman, the wife dies of a broken heart. When she learns that she's being betrayed and the husband is about to leave her, she literally dies. He finds her dead and he takes the blame. He feels guilty, but it's too late. He goes to prison, comes out of prison, leaves the country, comes back to England, and now is like the Count of Monte Cristo. He's rich, he's much more uh, determined, uh, more aggressive, uh, more mature, more competent in, in different ways, technical and social uh, ways. And he comes back for his revenge on society and on the woman who, uh, this, this temptress, this seductress, who betrayed him essentially and ruined his life and uh, leading, also causing the, uh, the, the, the untimely death of his wife, his separation from his son. So he comes back and he's doing two things. Uh, with the help of this prodigious car, uh, uh, which is, you have to imagine, even longer than it is represented here, right? Much longer. This looks like a race car in the illustrations from the original book, race car from the period, but the description point out that this is a more impressive vehicle with a much larger engine with speeds that are similar to the speeds of the Terror, the vehicle in Jules Verne, 150 miles or so, which were 50% more than even record setting vehicles during this time. So comes back with the help of this vehicle that he has custom modified, uh, does two things. One is to steal. Uh, he, he, he does robberies everywhere in England because, of course, with, with the help of this car, he can move very quickly. And there is this idea that you find also in Verne of speed giving you the supernatural uh, quality of ubiquity. Ubiquity means to be able to be in several places at the same time, virtually at the same time. And, of course, when you think of being almost everywhere at the same time, what is the kind of superhuman, supernatural creature you, you can think of who traditionally has this virtue of being everywhere? In this case, literally everywhere, not almost everywhere. Uh, coupled with the almost the slight imagery on display in the first, perhaps uh, the Grim Reaper, like the concept that death lingers everywhere. Right, but the answer to the question, who's yeah. everywhere? The Grim Reaper? Not exactly. Well, maybe, but there is something else here. Or is that just heavy? 
God. God. God is everywhere, right? Traditionally, God is everywhere. And so you have this hubris. You have this idea of the arrogance of man who, with the help of technology, can rival with God by moving so quickly. But you also have the idea of the redefinition of space. Travel, traditionally in a pre-modern, pre-technological society, means to go from point A to point B. But if you're moving so quickly that the distance between A and B is almost annihilated, then the next step is that you're actually existing at speed, living at speed, that travel is not the condition of transitioning from one specific place to a different place in a geographical landscape, in a territory. You have moved to a modern human condition where you spend a considerable, a substantial part of your life simply on a vehicle moving at these speeds. And therefore, the quality of life seems to be radically different from anywhere in the past. It's not about moving more quickly from A to B. It's about existing in between spaces because you're constantly on the move. And it's almost spontaneous for us to imagine this kind of nomadic quality added to life because we are constantly moving around, right? You commute to the university from 30 miles away, from 50 miles away, you go on vacation to Boston with your car or Atlantic City, right? How many miles do you drive every month? But this is radically different from anyone who lived up until 1850 or 1880. And, uh, Would it be safe to kind of say that we're in a perpetually liminal space in that sense then? Because we're kind of always in between, like you said. In a way, but it's not, I'm not, talking about the in-betweenness as the fact that that is the space where you exist, outside of any specific location. That you're a nomad because you never stay anywhere for too long a period of time or as long as people from the past would have been, right? Go back just a couple of generations and uh, uh, my wife's grandmother who lived up to the age of 100, uh, so was born either late 1890s or early 1900s, probably went to the sea once. As a farmer from Tuscany living 30 miles from the sea, even though there was a train line. Of course, she didn't have a car, but there was a train line. She went to Florence just a couple of times, and she would talk about that. She went to Florence because when she had a kid, like others in her uh, area and social standing, she would also get kids from rich Florentine families to breastfeed, so that she would breastfeed her own kid and a baby from a rich woman from Florence. So she would go to the station, uh, be invited to this rich house, get a nice <coughs> breakfast or brunch, and then go back with the kid, because the kid would be staying with her for three or four months until the, 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 their family would get the kid back, right? But those were individual events and a very limited number of those events in a very rooted kind of life where her world was confined to a radius of 10 to 20 miles, right? And mostly moving on foot or horse and carriage, with horse and carriage. They, they had a horse, they had a carriage, okay? So this was Argia, but Argia is typical of many from uh, that kind of period. Whereas if you ask someone how many miles you, you drive normally and they say 2,000 miles, you find it normal, right? Whereas even 50 or 70 years ago, only someone selling door to door would put in that kind of mileage, right? Okay, so you have this idea. So speed is not a circumstance, something that happens but it's a quality attached to your life. And then, metaphorically, it extends to everything, right? 
everything has to be done quickly. Everything has to be provided quickly. Whether you want to purchase something, whether you need to complete a task or a project, right? Everything has to happen quickly. So you find that idea. The other stuff that the character is involved in is the actual revenge. So kidnapping people, beating people up, and of course, by the end, the car will be destroyed, the man will be killed, right? Because what is the moral lesson of this kind of narrative? That humanity is imperfect because of the fall, right? The original sin, the fact that humans are imperfect by definition, based on their creation or creational story. And therefore, humans are not ready for the kind of power afforded by this kind of new technology. The technology itself is too advanced compared to the moral or psychological advancement of humanity in general. Yes, please. I think also some of that tragedy and the fact that these two come about as a result of perhaps not only some of the influence who are adopting the end, but self reflection would be just as much as outward analysis. Can you repeat the last thing, the, 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 the last sentence? Oh, uh, self reflection is needed just as much as outward analysis. Self reflection, you said? Yes, maybe okay. because of the fact that after everything, you think you have some time to reflect on what you did and genuinely strive to be a better person alongside getting justice against the individuals. But no, he becomes worse. Yes. And it, he Darker. To blame the world around him for his own errors rather than himself. And that ultimately results in his own demise due to that refusal to acknowledge the harm he's done, and thus, in a cynical sort of way, only causes... And he was imperfect to begin with, right? Because even when he was tempted by this woman, anyone else would have resisted, anyone else might have seen what kind of woman he was getting into an affair with, and certainly by the time she suggested that they take the money from the bank and run, he could have said no, he could have severed his relationship connection with her, and going the other way, going back to his wife, going back to his honest job. So there are so many moments when he could have done differently and didn't. But the whole lesson again is what will happen if this technology is made available to society in general where so many others are as imperfect as the evil protagonist or antagonist of the story, right? So we're better off without that technology because we're not ready morally, which is similar to the lesson that you find in Jules Verne. But it also mirrors some of the actual concerns. Think of uh, uh, Cesare Lombroso, who was a famous anthropologist from Italy, who was translated in, in his works were translated in English right away, and he was read in uh, Great Britain in the US. His texts are still uh, studied Today, he famously wrote an article on the bicycle, the bicycle, not even the car, saying the bicycle will cause a multiplication of crimes because with the help of a bicycle, any criminal can commit a crime in a part of the city and then quickly move to another part and therefore be seen, have an alibi, escape uh, from uh, justice, right? Escape from the police. So just imagine if that was the concern, simply because of bicycles being made available in larger numbers to the population, imagine what he would have thought about the automobile. Okay, And don't discard the power of bicycles. Well, into the 1920s, you have in Italy, northern Italy, a uh, uh, gang of bank robbers using bicycles as their gateway vehicles, okay? <laughs> because in small towns and especially villages, the police didn't have a car, sometimes not even a bicycle. Okay, that was the extent of what I wanted to emphasize about this novel. As usual, you find a page about Christine with, where, where I added during the weekend not only links to Amazon Prime and other streaming platforms, but the usual collection of frames 
uh, taken at one or two seconds interval through the whole films, various links including the script, reviews, and I updated <coughs> the section. There is a section with notes that I'll go through either this Thursday or next Thursday, comparing this film to Bumblebee and Love Bag, but I also updated the section on the remake of Christine, which seems might come out in 2024. Probably too late for 2023, but should come out in 2024. Uh, good luck with making it better than John Carpenter's yeah. version, of course, which, of course, it's not the kind of horror movies you guys go and see, right? It's not scary. It's not really frightening. It's more like a comedy with some horror in it. Yes? Uh, just two things. Uh, one being, since only recently have the SAG after strike really had a had struck a tentative deal with the um, those in charge of the movie studios, I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, projected date is delayed even further. Because and, of this yeah. transaction, oh, this deal. Side Interesting. This, um, what I often feel a lot of movie remakes suffer from is that it tends to take its source material a bit too seriously. It's often expected that constant insistence there would be no fun within the narrative or there would be no yeah. like yeah. sort of tongue-in-cheek acknowledgement of what goes on, um, not even once, can often cause you to suffer and the charm of the franchise to just be taken sort of with it. As such, I feel the Christine remake um, Silicon is probably think, is thinking that perhaps it will take itself a bit too seriously, despite the comedy yeah, I got that impression. That premise, but I'll, I'll keep my hopes for now. Yeah, but it's basically the same kind of operation that investors at Hollywood like the most. That is to say, either create a sequel or a prequel or a remake, because you can at least get a percentage of the success and even a percentage of success of the original or the success of the previous film in a sequel in a franchise is enough for them to recover their money yeah okay. um also i just okay let, let me show the assignment while you're thinking about it um, and this is the assignment so i put in here October 6th. So I'm wondering, Kai, do you remember where October 13th was? If you go to, to the lecture readings page, yeah. perhaps. And right there, if you click on a week, um, I'll try to find where it was. Uh, oh, there it is. Go up a little bit. Up slightly. Okay. No, 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 I know, but I'm checking the next mm -hmm. one. Okay, yeah. It says assignments yeah. due October 6th and 13th, respectively. Okay, and the I'll reflection is the, is the second one there. And so I wasn't sure which was I'll fix it. No. Was accurate. It, it should be October 6th. I, I think. Okay, whatever. But I'll fix it. Thank you for pointing that out. And. The written reflection I want to review with you in case you have any questions. October 6th is the correct deadline. And the title is Fast Technologies. I use technologies because you, we have something that is not a vehicle per se in uh, the Master of the World between fear and fa fascin fascination. And the key to this assignment is to be able to find just a few even one or two good examples or episodes, scenes, in this novel, Master, The Master of the World, for which I provided excerpts, to discuss the reactions to the interaction with the technology, positive and negative reactions, right? That's why it's fast technologies between fear and fascination, positive and negative. So in a, it's an exercise in providing a commentary and an analysis of specific passages showing that you can read and understand these narratives and find things that are relevant from the point of view of the culture of technology and society. Okay? So, 
let me know if you need any help through email or comments inside the work, uh, the Google Docs file while you're working, okay? But it's time now to move on to the activity. Let me put it on the screen. And this time, the preference for the activity would be for you to complete it inside your Google Docs file. You can also work with someone else in the class if you feel comfortable. This was made into an individual activity at the time of COVID, but you can work as a group and I would need one text. In that case, inside your own Google Docs file, whatever you put there should include the names of the people you work with and the same comments and assessment will be then applied to all the members in that group. No more than three people, but two people would be fine. It's, it's good enough to work, uh, uh, especially ha having two screens. If you don't want to or you don't feel comfortable, I also have the usual pages. So you can come here and get pages if you'd rather use your pen. But this way, my thought was this way you can copy and paste short passages and then provide a commentary. For this activity, it doesn't have to be a narrative. It could be a series of points, okay? So review in class the pages from this particular set of pages entitled The Terror from the Master of the World and find passages that provide actual evidence, words, passages, phrases to show this or book one or both of this which, as you can see, is the kind of material you can then reuse in the assignment if you want. The fascination of the main character of the federal officer, John Strzok, his fascination with the new technology of this vehicle flying, going underwater on the road, etc., or his fascination with the madman inventor, or his fear of the technology, suspicions about the potential evil applications of this technology and how this technology could bring damage to society or precipitate society in a state of anarchy and chaos. So read, find, again, a couple of passages, either summarize those passages, mention the page numbers, and uh, uh, provide some commentary by yourself we're working with someone else to a maximum of three. When you go here, you find not only these passages, but usually you also find page numbers in square brackets for the quotations, right? Okay? And the reason we're doing it here is that I'm here to answer questions, right? so that you can answer questions now, working together in preparation for the assignment, which is very similar, just a continuation and an expansion of the kind of work you initiate here and now, okay? And, and we have 30 minutes until the end of this class, I'll circulate the attendance, but so take your time because your assignment or the quality of your activity here is only as good as strong as the passages you find, right? If you stop after a minute and you put in the most generic passage, then there is no genius analysis that you can perform on that. Try to find something that would be exciting for you as a person, not just something you do because an old professor asked you to do this and you don't know why, but you're going through the motions. Yes. Maybe the staff does some good experts that cover interest in bullet points. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Can we list out the ex like excerpts in there? Yes. As I said, doesn't no, especially now for this activity. Don't make it. It's in preparation for the assignment. The assignment has to be a narrative, but for the activity, you can make it into a list of separate points. Okay, so you don't need to connect one with the other. It could be as a. a a selection of passages accompanied by some
analysis, but make the analysis specific. Refer to the specific language, the adjectives, the verbs, the words used to describe the actions of this technology, how it operates, or how it is used, or how the madman uh, uh, interacts with it, or how John Strzok, the federal officer, reacts to it. Okay, so try to be as specific as possible. It is textual analysis focusing on the representation of technology, but the reaction to the technology, right? Or the reaction to the people who interact with the technology, created the technology, and so on and so forth. Again, if you work in a group, make sure at the top to include first and last name of every member in the group, okay? And as I said, it can be on one file because I'll find it once and put it under two people in my Excel spreadsheet. Okay, go ahead.